We have another leak from Natasha Denona, a little uh-oh, supposedly, but these little uh-ohs seem kind of intentional at this point. They keep happening, but we have a leak of the newest Natasha Denona palette. I wish it was from Natasha Denona herself because then I could get more information, but we still need to talk about this Yuka palette. Shout out to Charlotte Holdcroft because <laughs> this morning, okay, so she posted this at like three in the morning my time, but the palette was available on this website I had never heard of, like flannel or something, and Charlotte Holdcroft hooked us up with an affiliate code, but unfortunately, I woke up at 6.30, and by the time that I clicked on it, it wasn't available anymore at all. It just takes you to the main website, but I still got the screenshots courtesy of Charlotte, so thank you, Charlotte. She's the first, per first person that I've heard about this from. I think I've seen it in passing in DMs and stuff, but this is the first time we actually got any information on it. So thank you to Charlotte. I'll have her channel linked down below. I was like, <gasps> and it's so funny because I signed up for an early hot yoga class this morning and I'm, I don't like waking up before seven, but I had to for this class and I had been dreading having to wake up for it. Let me tell you, so I was like dead scrolling on my phone at 6.30 and then I saw Charlotte's post and it instantly like made me rise from the dead. I was like, mm, what is it? <laughs> so thank you Charlotte for also waking me up for my workout class. But like I said, unfortunately, it's no longer on the website. Potentially was an uh-oh that the company put it out on the floor. I don't know, but we're gonna look at it together. So first of all, the name is Yuka. And the only Yuka I know is like the Yuka fries that I eat at a Cuban restaurant near me. <laughs> what is Yuka? What is Yuka? Perennial shrubs and trees. It's 40 to 50 species are notable for their rosettes of evergreen tough sword shaped leaves and large term whatever this is what we got so it is a plant i was just making sure that that's what the palette is based on and looking at the colors that i'm seeing on google i guess it's based off of a yucca plant which make very yummy fries i guess it's like a root yes i like yucca fries okay anyways let's look at the palette <laughs> so these are the two photos that i got from Charlotte Holcroft. <laughs> so this is what we have to look at. And then I do have a one more, but this is the Yuka palette. And it looks like it was 64 pounds on the website. So I think this is a midi palette, which we love midi palettes. I think they're the best value of Pat, Pat McGrath. I just did a full face of Pat McGrath. That's why I'm thinking about it, which by the way, the look tutorial on this will be up probably next week. So full face of Pat McGrath for next week. Anyways, love the midi palettes because you get the most amount of colors for a minimal price point, but still in very high quality, durable packaging. And here is what we're looking at. I feel like this somewhat looks like Angelica Nikas palette with Odin's eye maybe, right? Are you guys seeing that? I think it's a little bit more vibrant than this, but anyways. That's what this is reminding me of, kind of safari vibes. Kind of looks like a yucca plant. I guess I can see the color, sorry. Anyways, so let's take a look, closer look at the colors. Looks like we have one, two, three, four, five, six shimmers, five of which look to be metallics. And then this one right here just looks to be a regular shimmer, Calathea. Oh my gosh, excuse my pronunciation. And then we have an interesting mix of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine mattes and then this fushi looks to be a cream to powder formulation which she has definitely improved on i like this palette you guys i feel like it's unique especially for the mainstream market probably not the indie market but it's definitely a unique color story for the mainstream market and i feel like it's wearable but still unique and fun the shimmers look like, oh, biggest event of the season. Thank you, Beautylish. <laughs> the shimmers are quite neutral and where you're going to get the pops of color is going to be in the mattes. I really like at the bottom right, that willow shade, that's that green. That looks really, really gorgeous. Like it's going to change up this whole palette. You also have that dark green shimmer. Like you can get a pretty green look with this, but I also feel like there's options to get a more neutral look as well. Three of three of these shades look 
extremely creamy just in the texture sitting on the pan. Now keep in mind, these are just the promo photos, so I'm not sure what these are actually going to look like all together, but I really like this palette, you guys. As always, Natasha Denona, in my opinion, is one of the few mainstream brands that's just not afraid to go there, not afraid to try something new. She comes out with fun color stories. She also comes out with really safe color stories for those of us who like to play with more neutral colors. But this one is fun enough where it's not a vibrant, vibrant palette, but it makes us feel like we're adding something a little different to the collection. And I feel like this is also very unique in the Natasha Denona line. Because there's a lot of brands that kind of bring out what they know is going to sell well. So they'll put out palettes that are very similar to what they've done before. Sorry, Pat McGrath, I love you, but I'm looking at you. <laughs> Natasha Denona just feels like she herself looks at her line, sees what she has, and tries to fill in the holes that are missing in her collection. And I really have so much respect for her and her company for doing this. Gotta give her credit. And lately she's been really consistent with quality as well. So I love this color story. I think it looks fun. I think you can get a lot of different looks with it just by looking at it. I will definitely be shopping this, by the way. I will be purchasing this when it comes out because I think it looks awesome. Now let's take a look at the swatches here so we can get a closer look. Honestly, this palette definitely looks deep skin tone friendly. I could be incorrect. Maybe they are so sheer when I get them. But you guys, this looks like if they have the regular pigment that Natasha Denona has in her palettes, I think that this is going to be deep skin tone friendly. It looks so warm on this lighter arm right here, but it even looks more colorful. Like look down here, <sighs> look how green that is. But as you go up and we cut off this part of the palette, this looks like a nice warm summer palette with a couple pops of green, which is a very trendy palette. And I'm looking at the finishes here, and you have to take this with a grain of salt since these are the promo images. This is what they want you to see, not necessarily what we're actually going to see. It looks like that top shade might be a duochrome. I can see like an orange and gold shift here. Three, four of the shades are really, really metallic. And then, hmm, 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 hmm. I, I think this was very well done. I'm looking at this, I don't feel like the colors are too close to one another, which is a weakness of Natasha Denona, but we'll see how they blend out on the eyelid. I honestly, from what I can see so far, I have nothing to complain about, nothing that I think she could improve upon. I think for me, for my preferences, how I do makeup, I'm looking at this and I feel like when I apply it, I'll probably have a desire for some lighter shades to balance because there are a lot of deeper tones, which again, could be deep skin tone friendly, but for the way that I do makeup, I like a lot of differences in depth. So I feel like, you know, the shimmers are starting at the mid tone of depth, mid depth level, not light or dark, kind of in the middle, and then it goes deeper. So maybe that might be something I'm going to be watching out for, but I could get over it, right? But I do feel like right now, lighter eyes are really what's in style. So that might be something worth missing, maybe. But we'll see. I'm very, very optimistic. And then, okay, so this was posted on this Instagram account. Thank you to those of you who DM'd me. Somebody was able to get their hands on the Yuka palette. And so we can have like a closer, more realistic view of this. And I can see Tipu. <laughs> Sorry if my pronunciation is weird. I don't even know. But that does look like a lighter shade. And then Plantasia is going to be the lightest shimmer. Oh, no. Comrebi. I gotta look the, up these pronunciations. <laughs> looks a little lighter. Honestly, I feel like it looks a little lighter in this photo. Citrine looks super unique. That Camu Camu. It's such a fun pop. Okay, okay, okay. I'm liking what I'm seeing in this photo as well, which looks slightly washed out. I think we're definitely going to have more vibrancy in person, hopefully. This Elysian shade has more purple in it 
than I expected, but it's going to go perfectly with flax. I like these different colors in here because that's going to allow for more variety in this palette so that you can get more of your money's worth. I, oh, it's not something that I like am looking at and I'm like, oh my god, this is the most drop dead gorgeous palette I've ever seen. But I am certainly intrigued. And then the last photo I have from this person is the packaging, which is pretty simple. But that's what I have on the palette. Let me know what you guys think. I posted on my Instagram story as per usual. I wanted to know your thoughts. So we're going to see what the earliest people to my Instagram story had to say. Okay, so I posted this on my story. I said, share your thoughts to be featured on my shopper drop. Hello, we're here. So here is what you guys said. Looks dark girl friendly. That's what I said as well. Okay. Drop from D Gorge. Okay, very fair. Definitely could see this not being somebody's taste. Catherine said, makes me want to go on a safari. It definitely does give safari vibes, which funny enough, Natasha does have a safari palette in her line. I've been seeing a lot more warm looks lately. I'm a little scared because I love cool tones so much, even though I'm wearing kind of a warm look right now. <laughs> but it is quite warm. Okay, excited, intrigued, but want to see review. I will gladly provide that to you as soon as I am able to. We have no clue when this is even going to launch. Like, we have no details whatsoever, but I'm guessing it's going to be soon. Gorgeous. Gold palette remix. Oh my gosh, why did I not think of that? That is very true. It's very gold palette-esque. Huh, I'll have to do that comparison. This is why I love these videos, because this helps me work out my review. I'll definitely compare. There's more green, I would say, in this palette, but yeah, totally. Love it, so excited. I love the way Natasha curates color stories. I'm especially eyeing those sparkly shades. Yep, she's one of the best of the business. Want this for fall. I love this color story. Not my cup of tea. Too warm toned, too yellow and orange. My money will be safe. I'm glad to hear you're saving some money. Yeah, this can be out there for some people if these are not your colors. I don't know, like, if I didn't do what I did, how interested I would be in this palette. Seriously boring. She used to be so creative. I disagree. I'm not on the same page with that, but okay. Now that we've said it kind of looks like the gold palette, Maybe. Confused, but this seems good. Like Urban Decay Honey Vibes, okay? Okay, thank you, right? I thought the name was odd too. I was like, Yuka Fries? Did I get it? Havana? <laughs> um, not a fan. Oh, this is like definitely you love it or you hate it kind of palette is what I'm guessing. All right, so we're, we're getting mixed vibes here. Very, very interesting. Would prefer a darker green. Maybe there is a dark green, but I'll see. It probably could use one. We'll see. Pretty, but I wish she would keep the gold palette and stop. Textures look weird. I don't know. I'm, I'm liking the way the textures are looking in this. I didn't think it looked too weird, but we'll see in person. You know how weird they can be online. I think it is a, mid, a midi size. Okay. So thank you for all of you guys who participated in my Shopper Drop questionnaire. So overall, I am really excited about this. But what I'm getting from you guys is this is kind of like a hit or miss experience here. Either you love the color story or you hate it. I think it's fun. I think it's different. But I don't think it's too daring. But that's just my personal preference. I'm so curious as to when this is going to launch. Because with that Love Face palette, it was leaked early just like this one. And it was like... Natasha was not even really marketing it after that. She was just like, here, she threw it out and just put it, there was like no big reveal or anything. So I wonder because of this, if that's gonna happen again, I suppose I'm part of the problem for her to like th just throw it out and be like, whatever, half the palette, which she said was not a Valentine's Day launch, by the way, the Love Face palette, and it totally was meant to be, in my opinion. Anyways, I think she did a beautiful job with this palette. I do hope we still get that big reveal that she normally does and, um. I don't know, these retailers leaking it early, they have to get on the same page here, but I'm excited that I could share this with you. Shout out to you, you guys who sent through some of those photos to me. Shout out to Charlotte Holcroft for waking me up this morning. <laughs> and make sure you guys subscribe to my channel and have my notification bell on because when this becomes available, I will let you guys know as well as I will have a review coming up with this as soon as I can. So hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful. And I will catch you guys in the next one. Bye, guys. Oh, and if you couldn't guess, obviously a shop.